on today's show. We discuss the new look Cavaliers, Utah's nine game winning streak, and potential waiver wire difference makers. Dr. J, Nate Rob, Zach Levine, who should be the next dunk wing inductee in our All Star Hall of Fame? And Paul Pierce's son steals the show in Weekend Whoopsies. It's Monday, February 12th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, listening to the podcast, doesn't matter. We're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. Happy Monday, everybody. Two is right. The international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Lily. And last, certainly not least, over yonder, that is the bearded one. That's Trey Kirby. Hey, yo! TK, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, earlier today, the Rockets' Daryl Morey tweeted out a link with info to the Sloan Sports Analytic Conference. He was highlighting some of the NBA legends who are going to be appearing, but when you click the link, you'll find a very surprising name, 44th President Barack Obama. Wow. And yes, indeed, he will be speaking at the conference. On February 23rd, he's doing something called a conversation with Barack Obama, which brings us to today's question. What will Obama's Sloan Sports Analytic Conference talk be about? The man loves sports, he's a great talker, but I think the thing everyone wants to know is a pant point presentation. <laughs> pant points! Why I never wear shorts to play basketball. <laughs> that is the number one question I would ask President Obama. There's gotta be a reason. But we wanna hear from you, so let us know on Twitter. What would Obama's Sloan Sports Conference talk be about? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get your tweets in. Fun Monday night show for you. Welcome back, we should say, to Lee Ellis. You were off uh, on a secret location on Friday that you then spoiled <laughs> on all of your social media well, accounts. Well, that's what we in the business call a tease. Oh, what a yeah. tease. Okay, okay, excellent. Yeah, so, I had a 15-hour uh, trip out to Oakland, and I met up with this guy. Uh, we were just a couple of dads shooting, right. <laughs> shooting some hoops, and uh, he was uh, he was a really good shooter, that guy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we just had a bit of a chat, and you'll see more of that interview Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, on the All Star Weekend when we're out in LA on that's Friday. That's right. Yeah, the oh, hour long, hour long <laughs> starter special from LA on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. That was a heck of a tease, man. Yeah, wow, it thank was you, worth thank it. you. It was worth it. Yeah. I, hope, I hope it's an hour of Steph and Lee. Why not? <laughs> so, so do I, we don't have to do anything. Uh, all right, let's uh, play a little what you got here tonight. That's Friday, we're talking Monday here. We're gonna debate some questions Trey's gonna throw at us and ultimately decide on an answer. You gotta be careful though, there's only one correct response and that's whatever Trey Kirby says it is, TK. It's just one game, but the Cavs are back! Oh yeah. Oh, wrong segment, but still, because in their first game since all the trades, Cleveland blew out the Celtics in Boston as LeBron nearly went for his third straight triple-double, and the four new Cavs combined for 49 points while giving LeBron 49 smiles. Who was more impressive, the new Cavs or the old Cavs? What you got? It's the old Cavs. The old Cavs are influencing the new Cavs, giving them that life again. This 30-game run here to the end of the season is going to be sparked by the old Cavs because the new Cavs are giving them life. But I want to talk about the oldest of the new Cavs. Well, you're confusing <laughs> yeah, me so That's much right I now. Don't want Is to your answer old Cavs or new Cavs? It's I'm like, very it's confused. It's like Steph Curry playing with Lee Ellis. Old and new. <laughs> Lee's the old one. Sure. Um, gotcha. I want to talk about the oldest of the new Cavs. George Hill, the guy who's starting, <laughs> gotcha. the guy who's starting alongside the old four, yeah, really, yeah. because the other yeah. guys are coming off the bench. Uh, George Hill is obviously not a Kyrie Irving. There's been a lot of talk since the trade. Well, they don't have a Kyrie Irving. Yeah, a second go-to score. That can just That's 100% yeah. true. He doesn't have the creativity, the handles of Kyrie Irving scoring around the rim. That being said, I think he did a great job against Kyrie Irving defensively. You know, a lot of people throw out that, that line, oh, he's that first line of defense. I think it's legitimate. I mean, he sparks their defense uh, because he is a solid, solid player on both ends of the floor. I think LeBron is going to love playing with him. I think they're going to get off to good starts on both ends because of George Hill. Yeah. And then, you know, the young guys can come in and, and bring that energy. But uh, George Hill is someone you can rely on defensively. And then those other four don't have to worry about defense as much um, because they've got that rock there. The bar was low, though, for point guard defense on that Cavs team, yeah, Isaiah. And Derek Rose wasn't much better. And, and obviously, Jose Cotteron was the other uh, point guard there. But when you see LeBron out there reinvigorated and re-energized and actually focused on the game again, it just changes everything about the Cavs. You don't need to have necessarily a super team around him. You just need to have players that complement him and allow him to be what he was. 
having said that, Jordan Clarkson, I mean, he hit some incredible shots yesterday. I don't know if he'll be able to maintain mm -hmm. that level. Rodney Hood, he came out firing. He was ready to go. They looked like they had been together a lot longer than, what, a day or two when they got in there. Great situation, though, for LeBron going into Boston, one of the one of his favourite places to go and win. All those guys come together. And the Cavs now, all of, all of a sudden, look like the team we thought they were Two months ago, yeah. just a completely different lineup. Larry Nance is going to be fantastic for them as well. He didn't do all that much yesterday, but just that athleticism, someone they can throw lobs to as well outside of Tristan Thompson is going to be great. All new guys played well. Yeah. I mean, we showed you the stats there. But to me, I, I do think it's the old Cavs. Forget LeBron. LeBron's going to be LeBron. He's going to be one of the greatest players still in the game. But J.R. Smith. Hitting shots again. That really helps that squad when he's in there. You Did know, you six like the selection seven. of his shots? That's yeah, fine when he knocks him down. <laughs> he also chipped in some defense as well. Sort of rare for him. He had the six boards. Tristan Thompson didn't light up the box score in this first one with the new guys in there. But I thought he was a lot more engaged, of course, defensively. And a bit of a guy helping to get back on defense. And then Jetty Osmond. Jetty Osmond, you know, inserted into the starting lineup here over the last two games. An athletic wing, a young wing. And he had another great game against the Celtics outside of blowing a wide open dunk. I mean, he was great too. So I do think with LeBron and these old guys, sure, the youth and the shots that the, that the new guys can hit from three, that's nice. But to me, I said this on last week's show, can these old the guys that are there, still there, can they step up their game? Because they were brutal for the last mm. couple of months. You know, LeBron was great the first part of the season, and then he just fell apart in January. A lot of people just thought it was because he wasn't happy with some of the guys, some of his soldiers there in that locker room. They're gone now, and he's definitely pumped up. So they both, everybody, I guess, in the end looked good. Old mm. Cavs, mm. new Cavs, old Lee, <laughs> young Skeets. No, oh, yeah. everybody. You're <laughs> right, still Trey. in your 30s. Trey, what's the, what's the answer to this? Well, I'm going with the new Cavs here. I'm not surprised LeBron started playing hard again, but eight threes between Hillhood and Clarkson, that's very nice. Very anyway, nice. shout out to Matt Devlin and Jack Armstrong. We're talking about the Raptors in America because after waxing the Hornets yesterday, Canada's finest have won their last five to take sole possession of first in the East, but another team no one talks about. The Jazz are even hotter as yesterday's victory over the Blazers gave them nine straight. That's the bigger surprise, the Raptors or the Jazz? What you got? That we're talking about both these teams, that's probably the biggest both surprise. Shows, it, it is shocking. Although we do talk about the Raptors a good deal here on, on this show, although you said the Raptors play-by-play -play and color men, you know, they complained this weekend that yeah. there's not a lot of pub in the U.S. for this Raptors team, so let's give them a little bit more. Just a little bit more. You think it's the Raptors? Well, this is the best Raptors team ever. And is there a low bar for the best Raptors team ever? I, I suppose. Yeah. That being said, it's hard not to get pumped as a, a person who's watched this team since 95. Mm -hmm. Since John Tabak tipped off in 1995. This is the best Raptors team ever. And it hurts Raps fans to watch LeBron get reinvigorated, I'm sure. Uh, and sometimes it hurts watching this fourth quarter offense get a little bit bogged down with DeMar and Kyle and go back to that. You know, that offense that isn't there, you know, predicated on their sort of new style, but they are great for, you know, 46 minutes, and they haven't had to go into fourth quarters watching that offense because they're kicking butt. Yeah, that's exactly right. You're not seeing any ISO DeMar or Kyle in the fourth over the last little while because they're not playing. Yeah. Because yeah. their bench unit is the best by far in the league. It by is. far yeah, right now. But the and this everyone keeps going, well, what are they going to do come playoff time? What's Co Coach Casey going to do? Do you shorten the rotation like most teams do in the, in the playoffs, or do you just keep running what they, for most nights, are doing here? Ten guys, and basically have two units going. Do you continue well, with that? It'll be something interesting to see, at least. Yeah, but the Raptors have been good all season long. Yeah. So we don't. Really, this is not a real surprise that they're on top of the East because the Celtics are cooled off and the Cavs haven't been great until this point. So I mean, it's the Jazz. I agree. They lost to the I do Hawks, agree with you here. And then they went on the most unlikely nine-game winning streak, perhaps ten, perhaps even eleven, if they beat the Spurs and then the Suns next. And they've been doing it on the road. Seven of these victories yeah. have been on the road. And they've also weirdly found a way of getting Derek Favors and Rudy Gobert to work well together. And I think that's key because last this time last week, Derek Favors was one of those names being tossed around. Oh, they're going to trade him. They're going to get rid of him. Now they're starting to work together, those guys. And they've had a pretty tough schedule. They've beaten the Raptors, the Warriors, and the Spurs, mm -hmm. whereas the Raptors, who are impressive wins still, but they've only really beaten the Wolves and the Celtics. Other than that... Knicks, Grizzlies, Blazers, teams that the Raptors, if you are the best team in one conference, should be able to beat in the other conference. So I think it's a Jazz. They've got themselves back into playoff contention as well. Only a game and a half back of eighth place, which is key to them. And your boy, Joe Ingles, yes. the Aussie, is on fire right Get now. Get him in the three-point shootout. Joe Ingles should have won player of the week. Yeah. I think Harden <laughs> won it in the West. Joe Ingles, during the streak, is shooting 60% from the floor and nearly 60% from threes, a plus 142 over this nine-game winning streak. Donovan Mitchell's been great. Yeah. I'm with you. It is the Jazz because the Raps... We've been telling you. We've been trying to tell you that they're a great team. So I'll go with the Jazz as well. But, Trey, you got the final answer. What is it? Well, I'm picking the Jazz just because I figured you guys were going to pick the Raptors. <laughs> Anyways, over <laughs> tra once the trade deadline season passes, it's officially waiver wire world. Over the weekend, we saw a few vets make moves. 
with Joe Johnson heading to the Rockets after being bought out by the Kings, while Marco Bellinelli got bought out by the Hawks and is planning to sign with the Sixers once he clears waivers. Who will be the bigger waiver wire difference maker? Joe Johnson or Marco Bellinelli? What you got? Joe Johnson. Is Joe, he going to play? Well, he I only think, needs... I think he's more like insurance but, from but the Rockets. If Bellinelli plays, he can shoot, but he doesn't really give you anything else. He might finish the games, but Joe Johnson, you know, he has a skill, a definable, quantifiable skill that and when the game's close, fourth quarter overtime, you want him on the floor. He did it last year in the playoffs. He's done it for so much of his career. You guys know especially what he's been like. Hey, hey. Uh, this is a perfect situation, I think, for Houston. Get another guy out there who can shoot the ball, take some pressure off James Harden and Chris Paul. He's money. I like Joe Johnson, even though he's been not great this season shooting the ball. Yeah, he's struggling. I wonder if he can be an old guy who just turns it on. He did a couple years ago when he yeah. got released um, you know, from the Nets to the Heat, but then he didn't really have a great postseason. I just wonder if he's going to play. There's a billion wings with the Rockets. Marco yeah, Bellinelli's actually actually going to get some minutes with oh, the Sixers. Yeah. He's, you know, might be their first guy off the bench at times. Yeah, they, they want that Redick for the second unit yeah. in Bellinelli, and he can shoot the three ball. Can we shoot, know that. Yeah. Not a great defender, no. but he can space the floor. And from all accounts, he's already saying trust the process on Twitter, yeah. and all the guys in the locker room are excited to get him there in Philadelphia. I'll agree with Tass here. I think it's going to be Marco just to help the Sixers try and make that playoff push. But Trey, what's the answer? Oh, Joe Johnson, he's going to hit a big shot in the playoffs. Yeah. Lock it in right now. Wow, lock, lock it in. in. This is a whole other segment. I'm using every segment. I see that. <laughs> Up right. next, you buying this beef? <laughs> when we come back, we'll debate which dunk contest champ should be the next name inducted to the Starters All-Star Hall of Fame. Welcome back to the Starters. Two years ago, we created the Starters All-Star Hall of Fame, honoring our favorite players and moments from All-Star Weekend's past. And today, we start with a look at the dunk wing, which honors the best high flyers. Now, we have already inducted four legends. Here they are. Michael Jordan, that makes sense. Two-time champ, 87 and 88, going back to back. He's in. Dominique Wilkins, <coughs> went in the dunk contest a lot. Got two victories. He's a lock, he's in. Vince Carter, he only went in it once, back in 2000. That's all he needed, because mm -hmm. it was the greatest show we've ever seen. He is in the dunk wing, Starters All-Star Hall of Fame. And last year, we inducted Jason Richardson, also a two-time champ. Underrated, in a lot of our opinions, 02 and 03. So there, again, are the four dunk wing honorees in our Hall of Fame. Jordan, Neek, Vince, and Jay Rich. So, we're almost at All-Star Weekend. Who will be the next name to join them? Here are the nominees for 2018. Dr. J, the 1976 ABA champ. Nate Robinson is, again, a nominee. The only three-time champ in this, 06, 09, and 2010. Zach Levine, a dunk wing nominee, two-time champ in 15, 16. Brought the dunk contest back for sure the second did. time, yeah. some people say. And our fourth nominee, Gerald Green, 2007 champ. Really brought the creativity in Vegas, had some iconic dunks. Cupcakes, dunking in socks. So there's are the four nominees, and I ask you guys, and of course I ask everyone joining us live right now to jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters with your answers. Who should join? MJ, Neek, Vince, and Jay Rich in our Dunk Wing Hall of Fame. I think the debate is either old school or new school. Kay. It's Dr. J, you know, who's got to get in at some point. He's a legend. Or Zach Levine. I mean, one, one of the two. Nate Robb's a little underwhelming, I mm. think. The three-time <laughs> the three -time wins. Particularly that first one he won. Yeah, when Andre Iguodala should have won it that right. year. Remember, Nate right. had a lot of uh, problems, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So the Zach show, Sounds the back-to-back -back -back year uh, was. Yeah. Let's put Zach in first. You want I mean, Zach? Yeah. You making the case for Zach Levine here? These were incredible contests. Let's be honest. I mean, yeah, we, we were sure. in the building for both of them, and we were all up out of our seats because the dunk contest had been a little bit stale for a couple of years. You're and right. Zach was doing th this one. I, I can't believe a guy running that speed can put it under his legs and dunk it from basically the free throw line. Now. He's incredible. And he said he's not done. He's not in it this year, but he said he might come back at some point and go for it again. So I, I, I vote Zach Levine. I'm hoping for Zach too, but I think we got to put Dr. J in exactly like Tass is saying. The guy won the first dunk contest ever. It wasn't technically in the NBA, yeah. but the reason we have a dunk contest is because Dr. J looks awesome in dunk contests. Maybe he doesn't get in the dunk wing since we're taking so long. It feels like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Give me a classic baseball guy, Tass. Uh, Jack, Mo Homero. Jack Morris. Jack Paul Morris, Rapp. yeah, get him a Legends induction, Jack Morris style, because <laughs> he should be in there. I think it's uh, pretty crazy that Dr. J isn't, mm. but you know, 
the voters. Well, we had <laughs> and he went over the voters. We I don't haven't know. seen those dunks like we do now. Like you've seen basically everything, but Dr. J, they were all revolutionary at yeah, the time. Yeah. So you know, and he's a legend. I mean. Yeah, and he won the '76 ABA slam dunk contest, like you said, Trey, sort of creating this whole thing. But he did go in the NBA dunk contest, you know, very very early on when they started. You know, Larry Nance, the mm -hmm. first winner. But Dominique, or excuse me. Dr. J was in the finals that year and competed in it again, finished in the top four. So he had some success yeah. in the NBA dunk contest as well, and we showed you a few of them. I'll make a quick case for Gerald Green. I know he only won it once, but when you look at just iconic dunks, a lot of people think of, you know, maybe not that one as much, but the cupcake for sure. Definitely. I can vouch for that being a lot tougher than it looks. Yeah, you tried it <laughs> on a seven-foot high rim and didn't even get close. And then this, I still think this is one of the yeah. most underrated dunks going through his legs in socks and how he somehow didn't like break his ankle doing that and made it look so easy. So uh, that's what we're saying. The people have chimed in as well on Twitter. We put up a poll. Who should go in the Starters All-Star Hall of Fame? The OG. Yeah. Wow. 38%. That's great. Going with Dr. J. I respect that. Zach Levine right there. So like you were sort of saying there, Tass, coming down in your opinion to, the, to those two guys. That's who the people think, but just like the, the real Hall of Fame. People don't have a say. Not at <laughs> all. People truly don't have a say, but we will find out who ultimately joins your Jordans and your Neeks and your Vinces and your Jay Riches on that starter special later this week, live from LA at 6 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you tune in. We'll also, of course, tomorrow get to the three-point nominees and then later the heroes nominees later this week before we head out there. Quick break, but when we come back, we will revisit the NBA weekend's best hoops and bloops. Whoopsies coming up next. Dr. J. OG, but still a G. Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Back with the starters, breaking news. John Schumann's going to be at Sloan, too. I'm going. Yeah, all right. Let's get to some weekend whoopsies. <laughs> Who got this dunk for the Philadelphia 76ers here? Robert Covington or oh. Joel Embiid? It's got to be Embiid. Embiid <laughs> dunked on his own guy. Is that offensive that goaltending? <laughs> yeah. I like those jerseys, though. Real nice. Ooh, it's beautiful. Uh, this little Pistons fan, happy to see himself up on the video board, but he starts dabbing and he's got a dog in his hand. It's all uh, sauced up. Uh, Catch up all over that signed jersey. Uh, That's gonna leave throw it in your pocket, kid. Wolves head coach Tom Thibodeau called for a tech for talking to his own player, Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> he literally was talking to his own player. As Carl Anthony Towns tells the referee here. <laughs> so the he was talking to me. He was talking to me. I was talking to him. <laughs> I was talking to him. Uh, when you're sitting courtside, you got to keep your eye on the game. This fan oh. got deflected, hit him. He didn't drop his drink, which is yeah. pretty impressive. He, he wore that doink pretty well, actually. Yeah. On Saturday, Greg Popovich, well, he was mic'd up. Always a good time. Right now, we each have a vote, us five. Do we trust Patty to not get his third foul? All those people who trust him, raise your hand. Okay, you're I like right. you guys, you're I right. like you guys. They voted to keep him in. A couple minutes later, he got called for a foul right here. <laughs> I'd like um, to change my vote. Uh, back to the Sixers, no and beat around, but Sir Robert Covington. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's a deep doink out. Yeah, it was, it really was. Yeah, yeah straight out of bounds there. I tried to add a little flair to the dunk. You gotta respect that, but missed it. We got two parts of this one. Crazy Hornets fan in front and the unimpressed <laughs> Hornets fan behind. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, uh, get that out of my sit face. Down. Uh, this guy ever sit down? Uh, Kyle Lowry, he just loves to annoy his bro, DeMar DeRozan. So here he is busting out the paper cut binoculars with Jack Armstrong. Really committed <laughs> to the bit. Put it on me. Yep. <laughs> Here comes Jetty, don't call me Seti Osman with another doinker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two hander. It's looking like Erie Welsh there. Mm -hmm. Not with the blown dunk, just in his face. Right. Black Erie Welsh. Remember him? Paul Pierce's son, Prince, stole the show during <laughs> the Truth Jersey retirement on Sunday, making all the faces he can while Doris Burke <laughs> interviewed him. Does this count as a tribute video to his son? Another kid here making things happen. The fidget spinner on the forehead. Trying to get it going here. Let's get it going. Those are still a thing, aren't they? Let's get it flying here. All right. Uh, oh. The old fidget stall. Got nice. him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can see himself on the video board, know. too. Can 
What a spin. <laughs> this kid's amazing. <laughs> Kings Wolves near the end of the first half here. Yeah, keep your eye on the two Kings here. Jimmy Butler gets them and they collide. Uh-oh. Yeah, down goes Fox and Willie. And the Wolves would score. Yeah, this is um, similar to the football game. Stefan Diggs. Yeah, on the Vikings one, yeah. Blake Griffin, he likes doinking guys on the other team. He gets Dennis Schroeder right here. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, right, right. I was tossing it at the referee. You don't right. think he was? You don't no. think he's trying to throw it over his That's head? That's awful pass. He's trying for the referee. <laughs> Got to tech for it as this lady. Yeah, tech him up. Oh, oh. After the jump, <laughs> Lily hits us with a very solid play. Don't go anywhere. Tonight on NBA TV, Fast Break Monday, we got Knicks 76ers followed by Suns and Warriors and don't go anywhere, pregame action starting right after the starters here on NBA TV. All right, we asked you, what is Obama's Sloan conference talk going to be about? You tweeted in. Trey, you have a few of the best answers. Yeah, some good ones. Fano says, the injustice of the starters not participating in the all-star celebrity game. Obama's probably mad he didn't get invited either. Nobody says, he will talk about the lack of wedgies. Come on, we need at least 40. We need a wedgie bailout if we're getting to 50 this year. And Skeets, you're gonna love this one from John Schumann. He says, I'll be at Sloan too, guys. <laughs> His talk is well actually. How to give stats on Twitter. Can't wait. <laughs> Shout out to Schumann. All right, Friday night's pick'em results. Uh, I was the only one to take the box and the heat quality win there. So I went from first to last in the blink of an eye here for our uh, February pick'em battle. Tonight's game, it's Pelicans Pistons on League Pass. Trey, Lee, and myself will take Detroit at home in the Little Caesars Arena. Tass likes Pelicans on the road. Good luck, everyone. Lee, very solid play. Where are we going? Uh, we're going out to Oracle for Saturday night. It's the Spurs and the Warriors. I mean, it was a clinic between these two teams. There was lots that I could choose from, and I find, found this nice little one it's here. Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, plenty of ball movement. Davis gets involved there, LaMarcus, and Kyle Anza. Look at the hops. Beautiful. That's what I call <laughs> a very solid play. Very solid indeed. Tomorrow, it's Tuesday, join us live at 11 a.m. Eastern on Twitter for the Starters Twitter show. That's Friday. That's tomorrow. This is cool. Tuesday, Twitter show. Mm. It will be a blast. Join us live. Um, get your questions in as well. Hashtag the Starters or at the Starters questions and comments. And again, part of the fun of that show is it's live, interactive, and you can join us. yell at us right there on the spot. All right, we got some fan signs, Lee. Tanya and Jesse and a dutiful yet decent security guard at United <laughs> Centre. They snatched the sign but gave love to the starters, which is beautiful. So they wouldn't let the sign in? No, but the security still took a photo with the people. <laughs> and Damon here with some mad hashtags. Hashtag the starters, hashtag fan sign, hashtag 76ers, hashtag fly, process fly, hashtag Lee Ellis, wow. Hashtag potassium, hashtag JD rules. Wow. Hmm. Friday, it's the Starters hour-long special live from LA, getting you all ready for All-Star Weekend. That's Friday, though. We'll be back tomorrow with Twitter show and tomorrow night at 7. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, Fast Break Monday starts now. Brace the night, people. <laughs> <laughs>